Well, hey guys, I'm a board certified dermatologist and in this video, I'm gonna share with you the signs of vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12, otherwise known as cobalamin, is a water soluble vitamin that is essential for neurologic function. It's also key for red blood cell formation and for DNA synthesis. It is a cofactor in a variety of different processes that are essential to keep your body healthy. We get vitamin B12 from our diet, from meat, fish, dairy, fortified foods, and supplements. Supplements. In order for vitamin B12 to be absorbed from our diet, it first has to be liberated in the stomach and it also has to bind to something called intrinsic factor that is made by cells lining our stomach called parietal cells. Intrinsic factor plus B12 are later absorbed in the intestine. Now because B12 is crucial for the health of your nervous system, should you become B12 deficient, you actually can sustain permanent neurologic damage. So it's really important that B12 deficiency be caught early and treated immediately to prevent permanent neurologic damage. One of the reasons I love dermatology so much is that your skin is a window to what is going on internally and there are a variety of findings that affect the skin, hair, nails, and mucous membranes that clue us into B12 deficiency so we can catch it early. Who is at risk for B12 deficiency? There's actually an autoimmune disease called pernicious anemia that results in lowering of intrinsic factor, so those individuals can't properly absorb B12 from their diet. Certain medications that affect the acidity of your stomach likewise can impair absorption of B12. Metformin, people who take it for greater than four months are at risk for B12 deficiency. And then of course, antacids. People who have Crohn's disease have undergone an ileal resection, that's part of the intestines. They're not gonna be able to absorb B12 properly, they're at risk. Folks who have a tapeworm, believe it or not, that does happen and can definitely impact B12 absorption and result in B12 deficiency. There's certain genetic conditions in which you don't absorb B12 properly. Alcoholics are of course at risk because as I've said in other videos on vitamins and minerals, alcoholics, as their disease advances, they stop eating and just rely on consuming alcohol solely, which has basically no nutritive value, and they become deficient in a variety of vitamins and minerals, including B12. Vegans and vegetarians are at risk for B12. Now, vegetarians may be getting some B12 from dairy. And infants breastfed from vegan or vegetarian mothers also are at risk for B12 deficiency. So, you know, if you follow those diets, I follow a vegan diet, it is critical, at least for vegan diets, for sure, to supplement for B12. If you're vegetarian, you know, you may be getting it from dairy. Definitely check with your healthcare provider to go over that. What are the signs of B12 deficiency? Because B12 is so important for the formation of red blood cells, you can develop an anemia, and that's gonna present with fatigue, poor energy, and just, you know, kind of overall pale appearance. You can also get a drop of other cells in your blood, like the white blood cells that are important for fighting off infection, the thrombocytes, which are important for clotting. So those are downstream manifestations of untreated B12 deficiency as it affects the, um, the blood system. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can develop some pretty severe neurologic deficits in the setting of B12 deficiency. First, you can lose your reflexes. So, you know, when you go to the doctor and they whack on like your, your elbow or your knee with that rubber mallet, they're checking your reflexes. Those can go away. You can actually develop dementia, severe cognitive impairment. You can develop abnormalities in how you walk, loss of peripheral sensation, loss of vibratory sensation, and you can develop a peripheral neuropathy. B12 deficiency actually can lead to psychologic symptoms, irritability, poor mood, and even psychosis. I'm a dermatologist, so what exactly do we look for as a clue for B12 deficiency? We're gonna look in the mouth because that's one of the first places where B12 deficiency is gonna show up. Actually, it can affect the tongue. It's referred to as a glossitis, meaning inflammation of the tongue. First, you get these linear, painful red patches that coalesce into diffuse atrophy of the tongue. Essentially what that looks like is a very smooth, shiny red tongue because the taste buds start to atrophy and it presents with symptoms of pain. It can obviously impact the taste. You can lose sense of taste or have abnormalities in taste as the taste buds atrophy. You can get an itchy, burning tongue, different little tingling sensations. If the patient happens to wear dentures, they may no longer be able to tolerate them due to mouth pain. Beyond the tongue, you can have dry mouth as a whole and dry, cracked, painful lips. 
Outside of the mouth, probably one of the more textbook skin findings of B12 deficiency is actually hyperpigmentation localized to the backs of the hands and the backs of the feet, kind of over the knuckles. And in some cases, you can have more diffuse hyperpigmentation. That hyperpigmentation can also affect the palms and appear in the creases on the palms uh, as well. Hyperpigmentation can affect the nails too, something called melaninichia. Now, why this happens, we're not entirely sure. It's thought to be due to changes in something called glutathione, an antioxidant in the skin, coupled with increase in free radicals. It leads to abnormal upregulation of pigment production, giving rise to hyperpigmentation. Fortunately, you know, this is reversible when the B12 deficiency is identified. When we're talking about hair, probably one of the more noteworthy findings is premature graying of the hair in the setting of B12 deficiency. So that would be kind of, you know, a sudden graying in combination with some of these other things like the hyperpigmentation on the backs of the hands, the tongue findings that I've outlined, that would definitely be a clue for perhaps a B12 deficiency going on. Fortunately, the skin and, and mouth manifestations that I've outlined here, they are reversible when the B12 deficiency is treated, but the neurologic symptoms, they are not. So that is why it is critical to identify the B12 deficiency immediately, treat it, correct it, to prevent these severe neurologic um, downstream effects. So all these signs and symptoms of B12 deficiency that I've outlined here, they're actually not specific for B12 deficiency. So how do you actually nail down the diagnosis? Well, you can check a serum B12 level and Serum B12 greater than 400 picograms per mil is considered normal. Anything less than that is gonna make you worry about B12 deficiency. Now, people who take in good B12 but can't absorb it, maybe because they don't have that intrinsic factor, well, then we're gonna start going down a pathway of checking different lab values and uh, we're gonna maybe check some antibodies to see if you know you have an autoimmune disease that's attacking that. So that would be kind of a more advanced workup of B12 deficiency. And it can be treated by either intramuscular B12 or oral, high dose oral supplementation. But yeah, you don't have to be vegan to be B12 deficient. A lot of people take metformin, a lot of people take uh, you know, what's called a proton pump inhibitor or a H2 blocker, like things like Tagamet, Omeprazole. These things can impact your ability to absorb B12 from food. Whether or not you need to take a B12 supplement, you know, if you're vegan, you obviously need to. You may need to if you're vegetarian, depending on how much dairy you consume or fortified foods. Now, if you, um, if you take one of these medications like metformin or a proton pump inhibitor, um, things that affect gastric acid, then talk to your healthcare provider. You know, you may actually need to take a B12 supplement. Or if you have, you know, Crohn's disease, you've had surgery, these are groups that, you know, that, that's where you need to have a conversation. You know, you've probably already been counseled about supplementing anyways. But if you're otherwise healthy and you do consume animal-based products, meats, fish, then you know, no, there's not necessarily a reason to take B12, although, you know, it's pretty safe. It's water soluble, so, you know, you mostly urinate it out. But I will say, as a dermatologist, we do see acne breakouts in people taking unnecessarily high amounts of B12. So, you know, it's not to say that it's totally without the potential for harm. All right, you guys, those are the signs of B12 deficiency. Uh, vitamin B12 is critical for your brain, for your nervous system, for your red blood cells. And you know, the skin um, and inside the mouth, the hair, the nails, those can be clues that you have B12 deficiency. But everything I outlined here, as far as these presenting signs, they're not specific for B12. So if you've got gray hair or maybe you have some discoloration on the backs of your hands, don't freak out, read too much into it and think that you have B12 deficiency. Um, you know, as long as you're otherwise healthy, you know, take it for what it is. Um, hopefully knowing the risk factors for B12 deficiency is informative to you guys. I hope this video was educational. On the end slate, I'm gonna put my video on the skin manifestations of vitamin C deficiency. If that is of interest to you, I will also link it in the description box, along with my video on the signs of vitamin D deficiency, the signs of zinc deficiency. So check those out if that is of interest to you. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.